Okay, how's it going everybody? So, unsurprisingly, today we're gonna go muck diving. We will go to a dive site where there are not a lot of corals, there's not a lot of structure, it's, it's a soft bottom environment. And, you know, surprisingly, there's a lot of very interesting biodiversity there, both fishes and invertebrates. So, if you know how to look, you will find extremely interesting rare fascinating critters now one thing i want to point out not all soft bottom environment is the same there is quite a range from very fine sediment silty sediment and this is what we will check out today in a dive site called Masaplot north in Darwin. i've linked to a more detailed description of that dive site and uh, there are other dive sites and even in that dive site when you get away from the pure silt muck environment closer to a reef you will have coarser sand in a lot of other areas a lot of other dive sites in the Darwin region you have that and when you actually you know right next to the coral reef sometimes you have rubble rubble in a sense is the same that this is a soft bottom environment you know there's no coral reef there's low rugosity meaning you know not a lot of structure and at the same time this is very different from the very fine silt which we're gonna you know mainly check out today and they are very interesting shrimp gobies I will dive with a man who doesn't even believe that there's such a thing as a goby. I will prove him wrong. And let's see what we see. Okay, so this is the first thing we saw. So this is a nudibranch, a sea slug, called Gymnotoris cochea. And this is a unusual animal in the sense that sometimes I don't see this in Darwin for a year. And then there is a month where the, I see multiple individuals of these on every dive. And a lot of new brands you would see on a very specific sessile invertebrate substrate. So some always sit on hydroids, others always sit on tunicates and they would eat these other invertebrates then. But not these. So these seem to be happy in the sand. I'm not quite sure what they're feeding on, but yeah, so now it's Gymnodoris crochea time, it seems, in Darwin. And of course we saw a lot of gobies, like this small goby as a commensal fish on a sea pan. Now, what are these? These are fish eggs, they're on a black coral. Who has laid these eggs? Who is the mother? And it's this goby. So this is a fish of the species Braninops tigris, the black coral goby, and you will only find this fish ever on black corals, these you know finger-like structures here. And you can see that at about 20 meters in Masaplot North. So this fish is also guarding these eggs and you can see the pumping movement of the gills so to get water with fresh oxygen over the gills of this fish. Tiny fish, only about two centimeters long, very interesting to watch, tricky to film because these black corals move around in the current. And let's hope for more uh, Brianinops tigers. Now this is Brianinops amplos, the whip coral goby, and you can see how the current moves around the whip coral uh, with the fish. Now I believe this is a juvenile pleurocetia. It's on a, another goby of course, it's on a encrusting sponge and here you can see the fish noticing that I'm nearby and it's escaping and here I slowed down the footage, you can see the escape behavior. And yet another very small goby, I think this is a, uh, one belonging to the genus Ibiota and there's a squat lobster in the back. And this is a trimmer goby. Now, these are two shrimp gobies. I believe this is Ambu Eleotris steinitzi. And 
they don't move much around in front of the burrow. So they share this burrow with a shrimp. The shrimp excavates this burrow. The two of these gobies sharing, you know, uh, one burrow with also two shrimp. And I put that in a time lapse because uh, often for extended periods of time, these gobies don't go anywhere. So having this burrow here really is a great way of saving energy. They don't need to escape very far from predatory fishes or from any other threat because the burrow is right there. So what they do, they typically just sit there and eat a little bit of plankton or detritus or tiny crustaceans and uh, they act as guards. Now, there is a whole selection for gobies which are sand colored, which are highly camouflaged in the sand. There's, uh, there are um, a number of different species. Here you can see this brown algae mat, uh, where, which you often find in the sand a little bit deeper. This is another, you know, different uh, type of sand goby. And you can see that these are, are very active and, you know, really nervous fish. So if they don't have a burrow with a shrimp, they really need to get away. Now here are two of these sand gobies fighting. So you can see how they adjust their position and then they try to hit the other fish in the side. And this is, I believe, Stenogobiops. And um, this is a goby which is very common in Darwin and these two I think they're probably fighting over territory we're really talking about square centimeters of a territory here and now it's doing this pumping movement jumping up and down in preparation for another onslaught onto the other fish so this went on for several minutes I've, I've filmed this for quite a while you know there's there's a lot of drama in the small world Sir, okay, as an experienced muck diver, uh -huh. you know, what is your strategy to find critters, to find interesting, you know, uh, hidden animals in the muck? How do you go about this? Uh, well, one of the key things would be to go slowly and yeah. take your time and spend your time looking at things. If you're going quickly, you're going to miss things. In the muck, things are well camouflaged. And so uh, one of the things you'll look for would be any type of movement. So yeah. does something move? Does a fin Excellent move? Tip. Does a mouth move? Does a gill move? Do, you know, have they twitched a leg or uh, something like that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Often things will mimic the motion of things like seaweed. So certain fishes will sway back and forth with the uh not the tide the the, the surge the surge too. Yeah. yeah they'll yeah. sway back and forth with the surge uh so they can be difficult to spot too yeah yeah and so it's it's highly useful of course to know what you're looking for correct know what you're looking for yeah. um also be open to looking for things that you haven't seen before okay um uh, you know things that are particularly hard to find uh, they will camouflage themselves um, decorator crabs they're always funny because they cover themselves with things that they're surrounded with they'll be covered with algae or they'll have little corals on them or they'll have uh, sponges on them or you know um, a big massive log on its back like the one that yeah, we found yeah, the one that we found at night okay so that's a lot of strategies you know to visually uh, get a hold of this muck environment mm. I'd say uh, let's do it all right let's go let's so, what do you think about muck diving Come on. you don't a lot muck, of muck diving <laughs> now these are garden eels so this is a very odd group of fishes this you see actually quite frequently in Darwin and the thing about the garden eels is that they're very hard to film so if you come close then they will immediately disappear in the sand so these are sessile vertebrates so these are fish which spend parts of their life as lava and then they settle in the sand and then they never leave the sandy burrow. So there's actually a observation from a public aquarium in Japan where they were mating and they would just mate with a uh, other eel next to them of the fitting sex. And then 
there would be no movement out of that board, even when mating. So I had to put my camera in the sand in order to film them, and then I left. And it seems that when I did that, somebody else saw my dive, my camera, and this was a really rude and impolite diver. So, you know, sometimes you really have to wonder what's going on with some people, why they act the way they do. I'm offended. And if you have made it that far, you probably like my content, so please support the channel. Now, I put my PayPal in the description, and I also have three books out, which might interest you. So this is The Lives of Gobies. Now, you know what's a goby? It's a small fish or one of many species of gobies. So this is a popular science book with a lot of photographs of gobies. And I have out Your Brain on Diving, which is about the neuroscience of scuba diving. What happens to your brain when you're underwater? And finally coming out very soon with Asian Geographic and written together with James Reimer, 25 Future Dives about environmental problems in the ocean. And see you soon.